As spring arrived in the Florida Keys this year, mosquitoes began emerging from boxes just like these. These particular Aedes aegypti mosquitoes are all male and engineered to carry a gene that kills female offspring. That's because it's the females that bite and thus contribute to the spread of diseases like dengue fever and Zika. Researchers have micro-injected mosquito eggs with DNA carrying the lethality gene, overproducing a protein that clogs up the machinery in a female mosquito's cells, preventing essential genes from being expressed and eventually killing them. What we look at is our control of the vectors of, of these diseases. So how could the gene editing of mosquitoes help suppress vector-borne diseases like Zika or West Nile? And what are the potential drawbacks? Oxitec, the company behind the experiment in the Florida Keys, has released mosquitoes in Brazil, Panama, and the Cayman Islands. And in Burkina Faso in 2019, a group called Target Malaria released sterile male Anopheles gambii mosquitoes, the type of mosquito that transmits the parasites which cause malaria. Here, scientists use the gene editing tool CRISPR to insert an enzyme that cuts the X chromosomes during sperm production. There's a lot of interest in these technologies because of their potential as a tool to fight certain endemic diseases. But there are also a lot of questions about the impact on our health and the planet's. We, we barely understand ecosystems and, you know, we could study ecosystems for another hundred years and we still wouldn't fully understand them. So this is the real risk here is we don't fully understand ecosystems. In the Florida Keys, a coalition has formed to protest the modified mosquitoes release. Oxitec has received approvals from the Environmental Protection Agency as well as state and local authorities. But the head of the Florida Keys Environmental Coalition, Barry Ray, points to the EPA's risk assessment, wherein the agency noted it hasn't studied the health risk from a genetically modified mosquito bite because the likelihood of a female surviving is negligible. Female mosquitoes transmit pathogens through their saliva, which is used as an anti-clotting mechanism to make it easier to draw blood. But Oxitec uses the antibiotic tetracycline as a switch which can halt production of the protein that kills the female offspring meaning the females will survive. It's used in their laboratory in the UK to keep females alive long enough to lay eggs. And Barry Ray says it can be found in sewage in the Florida Keys. We have a lot of abandoned septic systems down here. We have active septic systems still. We have uh, open ports to a vacuum-based uh, sewage system. <laughs> so there's cans of water sitting around where Mosquitoes can lay their eggs at the edges and perhaps ha hatch mosquitoes. We, you know, but to not investigate that, that brings up one risk that you could be producing female mosquitoes and not even knowing it. Oxitec and the Florida Keys Mosquito Control District both say if genetically modified females are found, they'll halt the experiment. And, and we have committed to the EPA as part of the, the permit that if there's any females released that the, uh, the, the process will stop right there uh, until we get it sorted out. Ray's other concern is off-target mutations that could result in a mosquito that is better adapted to transmitting pathogens more aggressive and that mosquitoes raised near antibiotics could become more chemically resistant. A researcher at the University of Florida's Department of Infectious Diseases and Immunology says such adaptations are doubtful. Like those genes are all under tight control. Um, so by changing one tiny variable in mosquito, it's extremely unlikely that you're gonna have large scale effects on other properties of the mosquito. Keys mosquitoes all have a fluorescent marker that allows Oxitec to monitor them and their offspring for up to 10 generations and they say only the Aedes aegypti mosquito is affected and that the impact on the Keys ecosystem will be minimal. So there are no harmful impacts for beneficial insects like bees or butterflies and even other mosquitoes. But risk is a difficult thing to calculate, which is why Carrie Bowman stresses the need for informed consent, even if cultural differences might make it harder to obtain. So definitely, you know, the more different, you know, the further afield you go culturally, uh, the more complex this will get ethically. Ali Tapsova heads up a coalition opposed to the project in Burkina Faso. He says researchers told people in that country that genetically modified mosquitoes could end malaria. 
Il faut, il faut dire que ici, yes, then it must be said that here we have abused local communities by simply explaining to them that it is research that will overcome malaria. But we did not explain the health, economy, political and ecological issues behind this. We have not made it clear to the community that we are going to manipulate mosquitoes genetically. Besides, it is difficult in our language to describe genetic modifications. Target Malaria says they have done everything possible to inform people about the science. For example, at the village level, what we're doing is that uh, we have worked, you know, with uh, linguists here in Burkina. They went there, you know, in the village. They try to work, you know, with the villages so that they can try to try to translate all these difficult terms from, you know, French to the local language that reflect, you know, or, or, or link to something really that they can understand. Dr. Abdoulaye Diabate says the group also hosts open houses to teach villagers about the mosquitoes and answer questions. And he says the biggest benefit of this technology is that it doesn't discriminate. If everything is really, really successful, the beauty in this that uh, is going to be equitable. As you know, the situation in Africa here is very difficult for people sometimes, you know, to get access to some remote places because you don't have a road and all the things. But if you have this new technology, you release mosquitoes in one place, so mosquitoes are just going to be the one who will spread the gene of interest even to these remote places. It could be years or even decades before we fully understand the implications of these projects. But for authorities in places where these tests are being done, the bottom line is that regular pest control methods aren't working as well as they used to. Those uh, pesticides uh, through use for years and years and years are becoming less and less effective. In the Keys, diseases like dengue and Zika are a real concern for authorities. Last year, 70 cases of dengue fever were reported in Florida. But in Africa, where malaria kills half a million people a year, if these experiments are successful, it could be a game changer. Thanks for watching Global News. To stay up to date on the latest breaking national and international news, be sure to subscribe to our channel.